What is going on guys, this is Daniel, and I've broken down the Spurs offense in the past and I've also made separate videos breaking down their specific plays and all this footage is from games 1 and 2 of the Blazers Spurs series and I'll show you how they demolished the Blazers defense, so let's get to it. First let's talk pick and rolls and I've talked about it in the past when the defense allows middle on the pick and roll and the big man sags it puts him in a 2 on 1 situation and here Lopez decides to sag low to stop the roll which gives Ginobili a wide open floater. Again the Blazers allow middle on the pick and roll and when Lopez sags like that that'll give Tony Parker an open shot all day long. Now the best way to stop the pick and roll is by using ice defense where the on ball defender forces sideline and fights over the screen while the person guarding the big man sags to contain the drive. Here they contain it but the spurs go right into a dribble pitch which leads to a middle pick and roll and they get a foul out of it. The Blazers again nicely perform ice to stop the pick and roll but when the spurs go dribble pitch to the middle Lopez sags and Parker has an open shot. Once more this happens, and when this time Lopez decides to help on the ball handler Parker, that leaves his man the rower splitter open who gets fouled. I can't emphasize enough, if you allow middle on the pick and roll, bad things will happen. Here the Blazers play ice, but when the spacing between the roll man and the ball handler is that good, it's tough to stop. Watch closely how Tony Parker is defended by Ice but snakes back into the middle and that is like a middle pick and roll. Robinson is in a 2 on 1 and they get splitter for a layup. When Parker can get to the middle like this, it's almost unfair. And even when they keep Parker away from the middle, when he can dribble in circles like this across the baseline, it's a nightmare for the defense. And how splitter misses this layup, I have no idea. And this is what James Harden likes to do, receive a high pick and roll and attack the sagging big man. The Blazers also tried to go under some of these pick and rolls, forcing the long two, and while that's a good idea against most players, Tony Parker can hit these shots at a high rate. And when the Blazers go under these pick and rolls, even if Tony Parker doesn't take the shot, he can drive in and collapse the defense, and here he finds Duncan for a wide open shot. If the Spurs guards are being overplayed, they are taught to back cut and that directly leads to a baseline drive and Parker can abuse Lillard here. They also run a double staggered pick and roll where one man will pop and one man will roll to the basket and here when Splitter rolls to the basket he finds an opening and gets a good look. The last screener can also re-screen the ball handler to the middle as Aaron Baines does here and Patty Mills gets a wide open jumper. If the last big man doesn't hedge, Parker can get great shots like this every time. Let's talk about the Spurs motion weak play which starts with a guard to wing pass and then Parker will cut to the basket, Leonard reverses the ball to the trailer big man and Parker will cross pass with Ginobili and usually the ball goes to Parker back up top but here they nicely find Ginobili on the slip to the basket. Beautiful. Here Parker does get the ball back up top. Then Danny Green will cross screen for the big man splitter and he can either post up or screen the ball. Here he screens the ball which turns into a middle pick and roll and when that happens it's game over. This time it's Duncan who decides to screen for Parker and this gets him great post position and he takes advantage. Now after the wing, in this case Kawhi Leonard, cross screens, he receives his own down screen to the top and here he gets wide open for a jump shot. Watch DL here how he could use that cross screen, screen for the ball handler Parker or use that down screen from Duncan which he does here because he's a good shooter he can do this and he makes a crucial 3. And I didn't mention this option in my motion week video. Parker would usually go to the wing to receive the pass, but he can also go the opposite direction and receive a double staggered screen along the baseline, and here he does that and receives a pass to get a floater in the lane. Here the Spurs run a play called floppy, which is similar to the single double where Marco Bellinelli will have an option to choose the double screen or the single screen. Here he chooses the single screen and drains it. They primarily run this play for Bellinelli as he probably requested it and he works well in it and here he curls to the basket, fakes the defender and gets a layup. 
Notice how Bellinelli moves well and has a lot of freedom to do what he wants, and here when he curls to the basket he finds Duncan for an open shot. And the reason I'm not a huge fan of the single double or floppy is because it does often lead to these long twos, but Marco Bellinelli hits both of these. Now if there isn't a shot or a curl off the screen, they could go into a pick and roll which happens with Kawhi Leonard here, and Kawhi Leonard drains a jumper. Here off floppy, Bellinelli will come off the screens, hit Ginobili on the wing, and then UCLA cut to the basket, and here he gets the pass from Ginobili which directly leads to a Patty Mills 3, and he gets fouled. Now this is from game 3, but I couldn't help but show it to you, as off floppy, they'll hit the post, and watch the hammer action going on on the weak side, as Duncan will back screen to the corner for Patty Mills, Dio throws a perfect cross court pass, and Patty Mills splashes it. Incredible. Let's talk about the Spurs play motion strong where the point guard will first reverse it to the trailer and they'll hit the wing and then they'll both set a double staggered screen for the wing in the corner, in this case Bellinelli, and he gets a good look. When Tony Parker doesn't take the immediate shot, it flows into a pick and roll and he gets a good shot out of it. Now usually Ayers here will reverse this ball to the blue circle Joseph, but this time he can also dribble handoff with the red circle Bellinelli and Bellinelli drains the shot. Now let's talk about the Spurs famous loop play which always starts with a zipper cut to the top. And then Tony Parker will receive 3 screens around the loop. And they get a 2 on 1, but this is a great block by Robin Lopez. This time it's Ginobili running the loop, and he cuts it back on the first screen and gets a wide open look for a 3. Notice when Parker curls it to the basket, Lopez has to help just like a middle pick and roll and that leaves Duncan open. Here Parker drops the ball, but they can flow right into a pick and roll and Parker can hit the jump shot. Again Parker and Duncan flow into a pick and roll and here they get Duncan for a shot. And look, it's the elevator play where Patty Mills will set an off-ball screen to distract his defender and then sprint between the elevator doors for an open 3-pointer. Here's pinch post where Danny Green will hit the high post and cut around Duncan and he'll receive a dribble handoff and that collapses the defense and they get a tip in. And this is basketball 101 as when Dia receives the ball in the post, look at the great spacing and movement and they find Baines for a layup. On the fast break, the Spurs are also elite, and here Ginobili fires a nice bounce pass for Diaw for the and one. Watch how Duncan will screen two defenders on a fast break, and they get a layup. And in Dean Smith's basketball book, I learned how the best way to score on a 2-on-1 -on fast break is to pass it back and forth to keep the one defender off balance, and that's exactly what the Spurs do here as Leonard gets a dunk. And once a game, Tony Parker will wow you with a spin move. Well there you have it guys, you can see how fluid the Spurs offense is and how well they execute their plays. So thanks for watching and see you next time.